The beginning of religious wars is the very same way it will end. In fact, the Bible record says that in heaven there was war between the angels against angels. Against angels. On earth, we have had Cain versus Abel, Jacob versus Esau, Isaac versus Ishmael, Jews versus Gentiles, Catholics versus Islam, Hinduism versus Buddhism, and Christians versus non-Christians. If you take your time and look at all the underlining sentiments between warring fractions and nations that disagree with each other, you will find that every war, every um, conflict centers on religion, centers on religion. And even within Christianity, we find that there is those factions. So now you understand how the, this plays out in light of biblical prophecy, because in Daniel chapter two, verse 44, verse 40, 42, all the way to 44, Daniel's prophecy says that there will be a division toward the end of the, of the Nebuchadnezzar's image. And that division will be like, it is likened to a division between iron and clay. Iron and clay cannot mix together because they are not of the same product. They are not of the same element. Iron cannot mix with clay. One is strong, one is weak. Uh, likewise, likewise, symbolically, symbolically, this tells us that the condition of both religious and the political systems of these last days, these the times in which we live in, will be similar to the disunity that exists and the disagreement that exists uh, between uh, Christians and, and denominational or religious entities and political entities just like the iron cannot mix with clay. So the word of God, my dear friends, is speaking to us. And the question is, do we still believe the word of God? Do we still believe what the word of God says is true? And look at national religion and national economy in light of Revelation 12 verse 13 and 13. Because remember what Revelation 13 um, says, verse 5, when, we, when I read it, it says, that global political entity will come under the guise of a religious entity or will assume a religious role and even will influence worship. It will invoke as well as influence worship among the population of the earth, among the peoples of the earth. And also uh, economics will play a key role because we are told that no man will buy nor sell. So that is trading, it involves trading. Trading, it involves the commerce, you see. And uh, uh, the underlining factor that comes with that is what people professed to believe in. Uh -huh. What people professed to believe in. Now, when we look at the rise of American nationalism. The rise of American nationalism purports that America should be first. And you have heard this over and over again. It is ringing like a, an alarm clock on the political stage. America first, America first, America first. And do you know that this has some serious repercussions, you know, when people begin to advocate and say America first, America first, which means that everybody else must come second. Everybody else must take their um, secondary uh, position. So America's American super superiority and America's supremacy is uh, part of the political ringtone. And um, also we find that um, in terms of economy, buy American products, America first. So there is a conflict uh, of sort uh, that goes on the global market. And that conflict has to do with how America 
is um, is standing up to China, uh huh, to Russia, and to the rest of the world. You see, while on the surface, my friend, it appears to be a good strategy for America. It appears to be uh, something that is needed in terms of maintaining the economy of the United States of America, but the spill-off is that must be that the question that must be be asked and we must consider is how America American superiority on the global market will affect her citizens and how it will impact on faith and religion. I think this is a good question to ask. So when we talk about the rise of American nationalism, it will also give rise to a national religion. And remember, when America was founded, it was founded on religious principles. Protestant is America is considered as a Protestant nation. And you could see how this is being played out on the political stage. So now we go back to Revelation chapter 13, which says that the image of the beast will be likewise be a persecuting union of church and state, a religious system wedded into a national government and empowered by it to suppress residents who choose not to abide by her principles. In other words, those who oppose the popular views will be oppressed and most likely suppressed. But in order for this to happen, there must be a shift from democracy to totalitarianism or autocracy. Is that possible at all? Is that possible? Have you watched the trend lately? Have you watched how the politicians are speaking? Have you observed lately how the fermentation and the rise of nationalism and religious extremism is now blending together and they are speaking the same language? Hmm, something to think about. Let me say that um, it is quite possible in view of America's wonderful constitution and the marvelous record of the lamb-like liberty, we are compelled to wonder if it is really possible for this country to follow the old world pattern of dictatorship by way of persecuting religious minorities? Hmm. So my friends, while you are thinking and while this is playing out in your mind, let me say that the word of God, while some people may not want to believe the word of God and may be hesitant to accept what the Bible says and what the scriptures teaches, but it worth it to reconsider, to reconsider. And then we are not here to make any fanciful declaration or to take on a fanatical high, high, high road and try to uh, uh, make us, make, 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 make prediction, make us sound as though we know everything. That, no, 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 no. That's, that's not our purpose. That's not our objective. Our objective is to present Christ Jesus. And you have heard over and over on this platform, Jesus Christ, his word, his teachings, his promise of soon return. And that's where we stand. But while we are waiting, while we are preparing for Christ's soon coming, we need to be aware of what is taking place and what is happening in our world around us. Bible prophecy. Bible prophecy, my friend, is the key to the future. Examples in the Old Testament, specifically 
Daniel chapter 7, verse 25, you could write those passages down. Daniel 7, 25, and Revelation 13, which I read one or two verses, 11 through 17 is paramount. And those passages are packed with information that unlocks the political and religious fervor and developments of our present day and time. So write those passages down. Daniel 7, 25, Revelation 13, 11 through 17. And you, you will observe that there is a pattern. You will observe that there is a coming together of church and state, of the rise of nationalism and, um, and, 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 um, and the national, national church and the national religion and national um, faith that would make one wonder will make you wonder whether the beast symbolically represented as a world power refers to the United States of America in Revelation chapter 13. You have to draw that conclusion for yourself. I'm not going to tell you because I want you to develop the curiosity. Let us look at something here to help us grasp the prophecy. Let us look at a few unhappy developments in America's past. A few unhappy developments in America's past. And it is part of Satan's crafty master plan, by the way. In order for the devil to carry out his plans and schemes to infiltrate Christianity with false interpretation and so forth of the prophecies of Daniel, what is happening today? The master plan is to carry out this scheme, to carry this scheme, is designed to attack Christ's messiahship role on earth and in heaven as high priest and intercessor. It is to replace with the belief to establish Satan's kingdom on earth, the kingdom of modern day um, Jerusalem, purported by John Nelson Derby and other leading Protestant churches in America, known as dispensationalism. Now, I know this is a little heavy to absorb and to unpack, uh, for, especially for those of you who are listening to this for the first time. But, you know, just, just, just ride with me. Just ride with me. Here is how his plan has been played out. Satan uses futurist, futurist Jesuits interpretation of Daniel 9.25. Remember that text, Daniel 9.25. To show that the change in God's law was not done by the papacy and that damage was done by an infidel named Antiochus Epiphanes. Therefore, the Antichrist is in the distant past. Now, the reason why we are sharing this information with you it is because the Bible predicts that there will be a falling away. There will be a man of sin. There will be an antichrist. And that antichrist, that falling away, that man of sin is what Daniel chapter 13, I mean, um, Revelation chapter 13 is talking about and what Daniel chapter 9 verse 25 predicted. So this is why at the beginning of the, of the presentation, I mentioned that we have to take prophet, prophecy with prophecy and particularly Daniel and Revelation and have them to interface, interlock and to inter, in, uh, interpret the other so that we will have a clearer understanding of where we are today in the grand scheme of things. So in order to, in order to take away the attention of the damage that the papacy have done after pagan Rome came papal Rome, so the damage that was done by papal Rome on the law of God, the law of God by changing the law of God, uh, so-called uh, historicist, historicist interpretation of Daniel's prophecy points that damage to a Greek leader known as Antiochus Epiphanes. And they said that that damage was done by this man in the distant past, or therefore it does not refer to the papacy. So therefore, 
that prophetic fulfillment is in the past. It's a way to deflect. It's a way to turn away our attention from the real issue that is at stake. So while the world today is in comatose, while the world today is asleep, and when we talk about the world, we talk about the, the, the religious world, is asleep and not paying attention to those masterful prophecy, prophecies, they are, the devil is working out his plan to, to disrupt and to displace the prophecy, the word of God. So the use of dispensationalist interpretation of the prophecies of the Old Testament is being turned over to establish modern day Jerusalem as the capital of Christianity. And it has already been done. It has already been done under the leadership of President Trump. You know what happened? Jerusalem is now the capital of Israel. And so therefore, quote unquote, evangelical Americanism has now gained reputation by influencing the thought, the religious thought, that somehow the interpretation of the Old Testament prophecies is now directed in the direction of making Israel the center, modern day Israel, and Jerusalem, the city of Jerusalem, the capital, not only of Israel, but of Christianity as a whole. All right. So a look at the resurgence of anti-Semitism now, what is known to as McCarthyism, and neo-Nazism in America tells what time it is. Because once there is a, an upsurge of one thing, there will be a counter attack. So when, once we see the upsurge of making um, Jerusalem the center and Judaism the, the centerpiece of, of the Christian world, then there will be an anti-movement, anti-Semitism, anti-McCarthyism and neo-Nazism in America is also on the rise. Have you observed this lately? Hmm, something to think about. And those upsurge of ideas or ideologies is fermenting under the, under the Bill of Rights. And it was done, the Bill of Rights was done against Mormons. It was done against Mormons in the 1880s. The Japanese Americans during World War II, they put the Japanese in concentration camps. Uh huh. Why? Because whenever there is an upsurge of war, there is a rise of, of one movement, it creates panic and fear uh, among others. And the, 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 the way they try to resolve that is by evoking uh, the Bill of Rights and therefore trying to quash or to shut down or to intimidate or to keep in place other groups so that American nationalism or any other isms will prevail based upon the voice of the majority. So in the name of a more perfect union and the common defense, it compelled elementary school children to salute the American flag, even if it stand against religious conviction of Jehovah's Witnesses, it prohibited them to do so just like they are doing today in condemning sports players for not standing during the singing of the national anthem. Hmm. I know this is a lot for you to digest this evening, but let me continue. Ride along with me. During the same time, World War II, 70,000 Japanese Americans born in the United States, loyal to the flag, were suddenly placed in concentration camps or relocation centers as they were called. All these were legal and justified by the Supreme Court under the name of common defense. Remember, the, the Supreme Court supported that. So we are not all that safe 
in terms of thinking, well, because we live in a democratic country and that we are living in a time where freedom of speech, freedom of religion should be exercised. But let me tell you, that could be taken away from you at any time. The same interpretation came after 9-11. The same interpretation came after 9-11, created homeland security. And today, the separation of parents from their children under the name of emigration reform, where they separate children from the family on the border in Mexico and uh, um, other southern states, brings to the same idea, the same ideology. History has shown that nationalism and national religion be, uh, be breeds, it breeds hatred. History has shown us that nationalism and national religion breeds hatred. America's past history is tainted with racial and religious hatred. Sad to say, my friends, a country that champions freedom has already engaged in acts of persecution. Remember what Revelation 13 says, that they will neither buy nor sell. They will exercise, verse 12 says, and he exercised all the power of the first beast before him and caused the earth and them that dwell upon the, to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. And he so have great wonder so that he make a fire to come down from heaven in the sight of men and that whosoever on earth did not comply according to those would, would be uh, persecuted. All right? They competed genocide against Indians, calling them savages, standing in the way of civilization and progress, known as expansionism, from sea to shining sea. They practiced the worst type of slavery against black people from Africa. She has even used her matchless Bill of Rights as an instrument of oppression in the famous court case known, uh, famous court case 1857, known as the Dred Scott decision. For example, the United States Supreme Court solemnly sanctioned slavery and formally affirmed that under the constitution, no Negro would be a citizen of the United States. So we are not talking about something that is new here. We are talking about something that history have recorded. So because those things have occurred in the past, should we not be suspicious or at least be concerned about the trend that we are seeing right now? Let me further say that the court interpreted the Fifth Amendment, which protects life, liberty, or property, so as to make it protect a slaveholder's right, ownership of the Negro, and claim that the slave is his property and therefore has no rights under the same constitution. So now in 1908, the Supreme Court in the name of the constitution endorsed the right of American states to shut down a private Christian college for no other reason than that it would welcome descendants of slaves, Negroes as faculty and students. And so that gave rise from 1908 injunction of the Supreme Court rise to the segregation laws known as Jim Crow, uh, the segregation. And today what we are looking at is a resurgence, a resurgence of nationalism. And it is coming on the fascism, fascism and uh, neo-Nazism. And so now we are seeing now how angry white nationalism has become and they had support from a former president. And also we find that the over 200 of the United States senators are silent and quiet and refuse to condemn the upsurge and the uprising of white supremacy. And so now we begin to see where we are in light of Revelation chapter 13. Revelation chapter 13 talk about that lamb-like beast that speak like a dragon, has the appearance of a lamb, but when it opened its mouth to speak, it exercised the power of the first beast, which is pagan Rome, as predicted in Revelation chapter 13, verse 12, which I read as our scripture reading earlier on today. So the first beast, pagan Rome, became religious, turned into papal, a mixture of Christianity and worldly politics, church and state. That's what happened in the past. We are seeing the same thing today. It should not be a surprise that white evangelical and 80% of white America are strongly supporting where America is going against immigrants. 
because it is a threat to, um, to the white establishment. And so therefore they are against the policies to integrate other people of color into it. So that's why you find even with the voter suppression and the voter laws of 47 states, 47 states in the United States of America, as I speak, 47 today have an enacted laws that um, make it more difficult to vote in terms, and they use the term uh, reforming the voting policies, but there is an underlining reason behind it. Revelation 13 verse 12 says, Will, that she will exercise all the power of the first beast before him. Another way to look at dictatorship, my friends, is to see how the executive branch of the government is undermining democracy. In other words, to call free speech the enemy of the people. If you disagree with his views, ideas, and policies and support the results of fair election, then you should be fired. This is the nature of dictatorship. So therefore now, uh, freedom of expression is suppressed. Freedom of religion will follow suit. Freedom of worship will follow after. Revelation 13 verse 17 says, no man might buy or sell. This is economic sanction in plain view. This means that when economy is doing great, everyone will agree on policies that are on the surface appear to protect the national economy. This will lead our attention to the next verse in Revelation 13, which is making fire to come down from heaven in the sight of men. Revelation 13, verse 13. And so in order to force other nations to comply with the legal agenda, she possesses economic sanctions, poses economic sanctions on trade and manufactured goods and raw materials, such as coal and steel. And so therefore we're moving away from that and so that tells us something, something about the trend, something about the development. And I'm sharing all of this with you, my dear friends, so that just your eyes will be open. Could it be that uh, as a result, um, there is a resurgence of the Star War and space flight to Mars initiative? The, flip, the Star Wars and space flight, flight to Mars initiative. And of course, while all of this is going on, uh, um, NASA is landing Land Rover on Mars. And the pictures are coming to us in bright colors and we are seeing them all over social media. So that tells us something. There's a language, there's a language there uh, causes fire to come down from heaven. In fact, there was a statement made by former Vice President Mike Pence uh, where he had vowed that space program would come back great again. He made the statement, here's what the statement he says, says, I'm here to tell you that as we still enter the new century, we will be beat back any disadvantage that our lack of attention has placed and America will once again lead in space for the benefit and security of all our people and all of the world. So we look at space, we look at the exploration endeavor, we look at where man is taking us today. That is telling us that because of the science, the power of science and the power of exploration today, when we read uh, of, of the signs in the sky, when Revelation says, uh, making fire to come out of, um, come down from heaven in the sight of men, in the sight of men. And we are seeing how magnificent and how, ex, uh, how uh, uh, grandiose America's exploration is. Adding all of this together tells us that America plays a key role in end time prophecies. So I share all of this to say that now is not a time for us to be complacent. Now is not the time for us to relax and to say all is well, but for us to turn our attention to what is happening in our world today. We cannot and must not make predictions as to exactly how the end times, event, end times events will turn out. But in times like these, we need to turn our attention to the words of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And here's what Jesus says. Jesus says, when you shall therefore see these things, when you therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken by Daniel the prophet stand in the holy place, whoso readeth, let him understand. Matthew chapter 24, verse 15. These are the words of Jesus. 
Hundreds of years before the birth of Christ, the angel of God told the prophet Daniel, but thou, O Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book, even to the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall be increased. Daniel chapter 12, verse 4. So Jesus is pointing us to Daniel, and Daniel is telling us that when we shall see the abomination of des desolation, Daniel tells us that many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall be increased. And so when we see how knowledge has increased in terms of exploration, in terms of invention, in terms of all the different things that are taking place right now with the social media, that tells us that Daniel is, um, Jesus is pointing us directly to what Daniel had already forecasted and predicted hundreds of years before. So what are we supposed to do now? What are we supposed to do now? You can trust the word of God. You and I need to open the word of God. We need to go back to the Bible and study fervently, study prayerfully, study the word of God, build our faith in God, not in man-made inventions, not in materialism, not in national security and worldly possession and goods and secure, trying to secure a position here on earth, my dear friends, but now it is time for us to build our faith in God. Why is this so important? It is important because Jesus is coming soon. It is important because our Lord's promise of return to back to this earth is even at the door. Tonight, this evening, I want to appeal to you. Where, where does your faith lie? Do you have more faith in national institution, national religion, in politics than you have in the word of God? History is replete with the rise and fall of nations, how humanity have conflicted and come together in disagreement and in wars, in oppressing people who do disagree with them. But today I want to let you know that what is happening now and what is to come is surely the sign of the eminent return of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It is my prayer, it is my hope, it is my my desire that this presentation will be taken as a warning. I want you to know that with no ill intent, I did not intend to put down anyone's faith or to criti negatively criticize um, the, the, the democracy or the constitution of any country, including the United States of America, because I see myself as a proud citizen and so should you. But the most important of all, when it comes to God, we must not put religion nor nation ahead of God. We have to put Christ first. God must be number one in our lives, in our focus, in our vision. Jesus says he came to do the will of his father who is in heaven. We don't have to be fanatics. We don't have to uh, come up with any uh, rhetoric to denounce or to bring down people to excite hate and to excite racism and national, nationalism. We don't have to do that. Jesus says we have to love one another. We have to forgive one another. We have to pray one for another. And so my friends, may God bless you tonight as you consider these words that God will reignite faith in you and generate in you a desire and love to be saved in God's eternal kingdom. Thank you for listening. May God richly bless you. In respect to how you began the presentation about Jesus Christ and how Jesus established uh, the, the church, and also you emphasize that Jesus... The, the church is built upon Jesus Christ, not on Peter, but on Jesus Christ himself. In, in, in summary, how would you describe the church that Jesus has dis established then versus uh, the wider context of Christendom even today? Very good question. Very good question. You see, um, the focus must be on Christ. But what has happened over the years is that humanity has shifted, they've shifted the focus away from Christ to human institutions and to, and the human institution which is founded upon human beings 
has become corrupt. And as a result of the corruption, the intrusion and the invasion and the, the adaptation of pagan practices, then the Christian faith is no longer pure. It is no longer clean. It is no longer holy because, um, because of, of what has transpired with its practices. And so many of the things that people today on the whole, Christianity on the whole, espouse to are in conflict with the scriptures. They're in conflict with the Bible because it is, they are more loyal to human creeds. They are more loyal to, to um, constitutions, human-made, man-made constitutions, rather than to the say of the Lord. For Jesus himself says, for teaching four doctrines, the commandments of men, they lay aside the commandments of God and they are holding on to tradition. And so this is what is happening today. And human beings are persecuting and they are practicing hatred toward other human beings simply because they disagree with their man-made edicts, man-made um, um, constitutions. But when it comes to the word of God, everybody wants to, you know, uh, they, they, they want to push it aside. They want to downplay it. They want to act as though it is insignificant. It does not have any moral value in this postmodern age. But human man-made constitutions and man-made edicts they want to exalt that way above the word of God. And so that's what's happening today. Richard, my, my final question in respect, into, respect to your time. In Revelation chapter 12, we talk about two different spirits. Uh, the spirit of God and the spirit of Satan. The forces in the, this world, either the, the demonic spirit or the spirit of God. In spite of all our nationality, our, our individualism, etc., how important it is to get to the bottom of stuff, recognizing that at the end of the day, there is the only two forces in this world, either the force of God or the force of the enemy of God and the enemy of mankind. Um, for us to now get to, the, to, the, to, the, to the, what is essential and see things from the perspective of either God or either Satan, and knowing that as an individual or as a nation, we are caught in the middle, and as such, we need to focus on God and let God guide us. God guide us. Amen. You know, it boils down to that. Um, you know, Jesus says that um, there will be, at the coming of the Son of Man, um, the sheep and the goat, the wheat and the tears. Um, and there are two destinies where humanity will end up in, hell or heaven. And so we find that um, there, there will be no gray area or in. Or, or in between when it comes to um, our eternal destiny. But here is the problem. The problem is the compromise, the compromise that humanity has made over the centuries and are making today. Now, the compromise is to please their egos, to please their, um, their national pride, to please their culture, to please their tradition, and they have weaved into and incorporated into their lifestyle and their belief system lots of man-made, man-made traditions because they, it makes them feel good. It makes them feel good. And we have lots of them. And they are more readily to agree on those things rather than to agree on the word of God because if you have to stay on the on the say of the Lord and the word of God, you'll have to drop a lot of those man-made traditions. And so therefore, uh, as we preach the gospel, we have to appeal to people to look back at the word of God. Let's go back to the word. Because it is only, only when we go back to the Bible, back to the word of God, then we will be able to discover the errors. We will be able to discover the errors. But as long as we put the word of God on the side, we pay less attention to the word of God, the more we will, people will be misguided and misled by human tradition. And of course, we know who is behind that, the devil. And the same thing happened with the corruption of the apostolic church. And if the apostolic church, which are so close to the time of, the, of, of Christ, got corrupted, how about us today who live 
well, over 2,000 years later. So if they got corrupted, how about us? Are we immune to, to um, such corruption? I think not. And so that's where we are today. Indeed. Uh, my, my people from around the world who are listening, after such an in-depth presentation by Pastor Lawrence, uh, Pastor Lawrence, in my mind, is a scholar, and he's quite knowledgeable on the matters of of Christian, uh, early Christian background, and um, and the present Adventist Church and Christianity today. And it was more than pleasing to to listen to him tonight. I think it was in depth and. And he did a great job. I want to encourage you today, given given the hour, and that's in relation to our time, the signs of the second coming of Christ, the events that are taking place in the world today. That everybody should be reading, studying, reading the Bible. Find out, discover for yourself the, the magnificence of the gospel its ability and potential to help men surrender their hearts to, to the Lord. I would like to encourage you to continue praying, continue watching this program. And so I would encourage you to trust God and he is going to do wonders in your life. Don't be afraid to trust in the Lord and he is going to move mountains in your life. Thank you. Um, I'm in St. Lucia. Pastor Lawrence also is a St. Lucia, and we are from St. Lucia in the Caribbean, 800 miles probably south of Jamaica, or, or how many, Four, 400 miles north of Trinidad and Tobago. And this is the most beautiful place in the world. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, COVID is trying to, to pull us down, but we have the sunlight, we have fresh air, and we have oranges, grapefruit, and mangoes, and sea water. So we are doing good, man. I love it here. Praise One God. of you, you must, you must spend some. You must come and spend some time with us here. I, I know I, COVID I, is in the way of everybody. As soon as you get a break from COVID, you can come back. I am. I, I look forward. Time. I look forward for that, my pastor. I, I truly look forward for that. God mm -hmm. willing. When the COVID slow down, then I'm looking forward to come spend a weekend with you or something like that. I'm looking forward. Yeah. Well, we, we thank you. And uh, before we, we're going to ask you uh, to offer a word of prayer uh, for us in, in a few moments. But I just want to thank those that are tuning in with us this evening. For those who are from uh, the Zoom platform, we say we want to thank you for joining us from Facebook and Twitter and also from TCVFM Christian Radio. I hope you have learned something. I hope we have encouraged you, are inspiring you in the Lord. Remember, on this show, we only have two objectives. First, to glorify our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, based upon the abundant evidence of Scripture from Genesis to Revelation. He's, he made clear that He's worthy of your praise, He's worthy of my praise. And the second objective is just to encourage you. It's to encourage you in the Lord. And as Pastor Lawrence and Pastor Morris have just shared with us, both by presentation and also by encouragement, affirming us to continue to keep our eyes on Jesus Christ. Because when it's all said and done, who makes the difference is Jesus Christ. Why so? Because He's the Creator, He's the Redeemer, He's the Sustainer, and He's coming back as Lord of Lords and King of Kings. And the text that I was hoping to share with you is in Ephesians, Ephesians chapter. Six, and you could just read from verses um, 10 all the way to 24. But in the interest of time, I'm just going to read uh, two verses. He said, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the walls of the devil. For you to be able to stand and for I to be able to stand, we have to put on the old armor. In other words, we have to give our hearts 
fully to Jesus Christ and then he will lead us to his, his, his end for us which is to prosper us and for us to prosper and be in good health both physically and spiritually. With that being said, Pastor, will you proceed please in praying for us? Let us pray. My Father, thank you for a blessed day. A day that was full of excitement. A day that was prone to disaster. But you protected every one of us. And we watched the sun go down today in St. Lucia. And we were all safe. We are so thankful. Today, Lord, we pray for the many people who are listening to this program all about America. I pray for your involvement in their lives. Tap their consciousness and remind them that you are God and you love us dearly. You die to save us. And one day you will return to save us from this world and from sin forevermore. I pray tonight, especially for Dr. Payne, I pray your divine blessing upon him. The physicians who are taking care of him, help them diagnose the problem and find the answer that is needed to get brother Dr. Payne back healthy and strong again. I pray for the dear sister and her daughter, I'm sorry, brother Dr. Payne's daughter, Whatever her crisis may be, her issues are, Father, I present this lady before you today. Have mercy upon her and, 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 and remind her that you are the great physician and you have the power available to you that you can choose to say the word or come by here and touch her and, 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 and get her body working as it used to. I pray for the prayer warriors in America and the world, the many people, Lord, who are busy praying for other people. We pray that you bless these people and, and ignite their spirit. Keep them firm and strong while the devil is busy troubling and destroying people. Remind them that they're on the Lord's side and everything will be okay. I pray tonight for the sister who lost the son at this Thanksgiving, last Thanksgiving, Lord, Losing a loved one is not easy. Uh, whether the person is, is 80 or 90 years old, sick with cancer or whatever disease, it's, it's not now. It's really not bearable. But when a parent lost a son in an accident, Father, this is tough. I've been there. I understand this context. You understand the context of death also. You watch your son died on a cruel tree. Father, in a special way, we pray for your anointing and your blessing upon this family. I pray for the dear sister who, who has a daughter who is hospitalized or she's hospitalized. Dear Jesus, we know we have good hospitals and good doctors. But Father, if you have not, uh, if you... If you, the great physician, have not stepped into this doctor, into this operating room, upon this hospital bed, if you've not showed up, Father, we are never good enough. I pray for Dr. Caesar, wherever he is now, whatever is happening, Lord, you know. So I pray in a special way for your divine unction on his life. Protect him and his family. Tonight, I want to pray for Brother Bonnerby and his family, his dear wife and two children. I pray your special blessing upon them. Getting this program to run every day takes a lot from their time, a lot from their resources. And I pray, Lord, that you provide for them. Send the money, send the people needed to this so thousands of people and millions of people will discover more about you by listening to this radio. Thank you for being our father. And thank you for the promise you are with us always and every issues of our life, you have it. You, you, you said, you, you promise us that, that if the a sparrow falls from the sky, you know, teach us to be faithful, teach us to trust you, teach us to live by your precepts, teach us to stand up for what is right, teach us to know truth and to live by truth. This COVID thing, Father, we pray for your divine protection on our lives. 
touch us in a special way every moment of our life. We love you, Father. Teach us to wait upon you every day in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Uh, I want to thank you. Thank you, Pastor Morris, for that prayer, praying on behalf of all of us. I want to emphasize what Pastor just shared with us, that in spite of all the things that are going on in this world and all the things that are going on around us, what is, of most, what is most important is for us to keep our eyes on Jesus Christ. In all things, Jesus is our example. The Bible also says that if Christ be lifted up, then he will draw all men unto himself. And as you read uh, the prophecies of the Bible, maybe from Genesis to Revelation, more precisely, Jeremiah, Isaiah, Daniel, and the book of Revelation. Those are some of the major prophets that wrote about what will happen in these last days. But at the center of it all is Jesus Christ. But what is most important for us, never to use sight of, that all of it is pointing to Jesus Christ. And so if there's something uh, that you should take away from the show is that the fact that the Bible says, if I be lifted up, speaking of Jesus Christ, then he will draw all men unto himself. And why is Jesus Christ so important? We begin the show this way, and we want to conclude it this way. Simple fact that he is the creator of the world. He is the one who sustained life and maintained life. He is the redeemer. He died on Calvary Cross on behalf of us. Hello, my name is Pastor Owen Bonaby, President of Final Shout Television and Social Media Network. Final Shout's objective is to join hands and hearts with our fellow men, holy angels, and God himself in sharing God's redemptive love with the entire world, that Jesus is the creator of the world, the sustainer of the world, the Redeemer of the world, and that Jesus has promised us he will come back to receive us unto himself. Please join our mission in reaching two billion people with God's redemptive love in three ways, with your time, your giftedness, and your resource. First, with your time. Watch and share Final Shout 24-7 anywhere in the world on the following platforms. Final Shout on Ruka TV. Final Shout on Fire TV. Final Shout TV on Apple TV. Social media such as Facebook or Meta. YouTube, Twitter. Download our Android and Apple phone apps. Or you can watch us 24-7 on our website. Watch.fanashout.org Second, with your giftedness. Become Fana Shout's show producer, director, contributor, host, hostess, or you can tell us of your giftedness and how you would like to serve. Third, with your resource. Support Final Shout financially. Become Final Shout's 12 Stars Club member, which help with our monthly operations budget. Two, become a sponsor of a show or sponsor a series of shows. Both individuals and businesses can be sponsors. And three, choose our merchandise. Thank you in advance 
for your prayerful consideration in joining our mission in reaching 2 billion people with God's redemptive love. As the joy of the Lord is final shouts strength. Wallace Muffler, our motto, you bring it, we fix it. Wallace Muffler's services, here at Wallace Muffler, we offer a wide range of services and repairs. With over 37 years of experience that you can trust and count on for all your vehicle's health needs. We practice proactive car, health maintenance, and prompt repair service. Specializing in mufflers, brakes, and any mechanical issue. You bring it, we fix it. Services we offer are air and cabin filter, air conditioning, battery, body and trim, brake service and repair, brakes, check engine light and diagnostic, electrical, exhaust, oil change, steering and suspension, transmission, and tires. Here at Wallace Muffler, we promise 100% customer satisfaction guaranteed. Same day service for most repairs. Work is done right the first time. Call us here at Wallace Muffler for an appointment at 203-850-5500. Or visit us at 379 Welton Street, Hamden, Connecticut, 06517. See you there. Taj Realty, make your dreams a reality. Taj Real Estate LLC is a full service firm specializing in commercial and residential properties, short sale, sale and marketing of existing homes, condos, and rentals, FHA 203K sales, and first-time home buyers, investor purchase and mortgage. We offer mortgages for investors and commercial clients. Non-owner occupant, no income, self-employed, low income, let us guide you to the neighborhood that's a fit for you. If you're looking for a starter, a first time home, a cottage, a vacation home, colonial, a city comfort, suburban, a hidden tranquility, Luxury, a lifestyle. Chateau, a modern French style. Even a waterfront beauty. Or, if you're interested in commercial investments, a strip mall shopping center. Hotel, city high rise. Storefront, commercial shop space, office space, business place. Whether it's commercial or residential, whether you're looking for a mortgage, buying, selling, or renting, Taj is just a call away. Do you have a question? Come in person and experience our full service at 630 Dixwell Avenue, New Haven, Connecticut, 06511. Or visit us on the web, tajrealestatellc.com. A call away. Call today, 
Call 203-691-1385.